so it's time to kind of make a review of this entire World Cup how can we see it how does it compare to previous tournaments and yeah I have to say this was a super enjoyable World Cup uh, I might even go as far as saying one of the most enjoyable if not the most enjoyable one that I've watched since I am watching it's a little bit hard to compare I mean the only ones that come to mind uh, as a direct comparison of being greater is of course the more recent one I think it was better than 2014 uh, especially since the final stage was also uh, dished up great soccer and you know if, if you have a great final that always makes up for a lot of things um, it was definitely better than 2010 definitely better than 2006 it had a it had not as many uh, surprises as say um, 2002 but um, it also had more quality games as 2002 i have to say so i would put it ahead of 2002 as well um the one thing that i'm that yeah it had even the one really dramatic on the edge of your seat game which was brazil versus belgium it was not exactly italy germany in 2006 or uh, argentina england in 98 uh, i would put even uh, definitely brazil versus the netherlands there in 94 uh, you know really big name clashes that keep you on the edge uh, Belgium Brazil uh, Belgium is maybe not the big big name uh, but that was probably the best game uh, given what's at stake and then of course there's France Argentina but that game was super exciting to watch but I don't think it was um, soccer wise the greatest game because you know after 60 minutes when France was up 4-2 it was Argentina did press but it was kind of decided at that point so um, but yeah this was a great game but having said that I mean this puts it already pretty high up for me um, my question is is it better than 98 and that's the where I have maybe a little bit of a problem I think 98 was kind of the one World Cup that I fully enjoyed most uh, like that it had a German performance that was uh, dreary but the Germans were longer in that one uh, back then I really hated the Germans now I was it's okay yeah though I take no harm if they go far because you know they at least until this tournament they played a decent soccer so uh, therefore I was not as much against Germany um, I, you know, 1990 and 1994, I mean, 94 I saw a lot of games, but you know, there you were still young and you were kind of excitable, uh, same thing as 1990, uh, this is hard to compare, I mean, 1990 of course had a much more defense, defensive play, but at the time I didn't feel it that way, um, because there were uh, games that I got excited about, like England, Cameroon, or Italy, Argentina, with all the drama going around, but yeah. Um, someone who probably is a little bit older, older than me would definitely put that World Cup ahead of 1990. So it's 94 is the one. Probably put it ahead of that one too. Although there was a little bit. Oh, this is a difficult comparison for me. Was there more drama in 94? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Having said that, this is among the top three of, my, of World Cups that I have seen. Um, I'm surely gonna make a count on among the games that you know excited me most, and I think there's probably not a game here that will end up very high up on the list uh, because you know the older I get and the more I observe soccer, the more the less emotional I get about it. Um, it's just something that I realize that I enjoy. Uh, if there's good work and if a good team and if the better team wins and even if there's a loss I think I was never uh, I never felt that anyone really got cheated yes Croatia will probably complain about the penalty call and the free kick um, but as I said this morning I actually don't think it would have probably changed too much of the outcome 
uh, if France really wanted to come, they would have come. Uh, it would have made for a more interesting match if Croatia was ahead at halftime, or if it was even level. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, I think if you ask me, it's 1998 and 2018, and it's all the coincidence that both teams, the both tournaments were won by France. What was in 1980 for me great is 1998, not 1980. 1998 was what was great for me back then. Uh, was that two of my favorite teams made it to the semis, which were France and the Netherlands. Uh, this time, of my all-time favorites, of course, there was only France, but I think I really enjoyed every single one of the semi-finalists. Uh, and that also makes for a great tournament. There was a decent amount of surprises. I'm thinking especially Japan, who almost kicked out Belgium. Uh, Brazil being knocked out so early was also um, so early, you know. For Brazil so early. I mean, most other teams if they make it to the quarterfinals, great. For Brazil, of course, it's a big disappointment. So yeah, there was that. Uh, Germany not making it through it. Then even uh, Italy and the Netherlands, my two favorite teams, not being there and Argentina being a non-factor, except for drama in the first two weeks. Uh, taking that into account, it was a darn enjoyable World Cup for me. And yeah, uh, I think France safely is back at my number four spot of non-family teams. Uh, and you know, I have all the love in the world for uh, this Croatian team. And yeah, they definitely move up as well. But you know, I always had a slight soft spot for Croatia anyway. So yeah, there's that. Especially when Croatia's jersey, the checkerboard pattern, this is so unique and that's what I love about that. They, they found their own identity. They have a kit that is instantly recognizable. Unfortunately, they had the worst versions of said kit at this World Cup where they made it to the final still. Uh, just gotta love them for that. Yeah, so it was a really, really enjoyable World Cup. 1-0-0 zero, zero draw. That's, I think, the biggest argument in favor. Um, I don't know how many goals have been scored overall. I still have, I'm still not on top of that. I even have not compiled the list of the top goal scorers for this World Cup, according to my al algorithm. The idea, uh, once again, today you can find it on, on, on my blog. I have a series about the greatest World Cup goal scorer. Uh, the idea is that not all goals count equally. Um, for instance, if you score three goals after your team is already 2-0 up and you win 5 nothing, And I think Batistuta did something like that. And I love Batistuta. This was one of my favorite players in the late 90s. But I use this example. Uh, those three goals shouldn't count as three goals. And Batistuta has many of those goals in World Cup play. He barely has any game winners. Uh, mostly adding on i mean he scored six of his total of nine goals at the world cup against greece and jamaica uh so that has to be taken out. it has also been taken on what stage uh, it is i think a game winning goal always should count uh, extra uh and yeah so you get the idea i uh, i will count penalty goals as the same um but yeah i think this will put certain players a little bit down the list. Uh, I actually think that Harry Kane will lose quite some points in this rating, uh, mostly because he made goals against Panama. Everyone knows important, but you know, both his uh, goals against Tunisia were a full count and uh, same thing goes for his goal against uh, Colombia. So yeah, I'll be interested to see that if there's anyone who comes uh, close to him. I also made it that, um, you know, a goal in a final counts, of course, more than a goal in a semi-final and so on in the group stage. So I think one extreme example was in 86 when I have the best goal scorer at that tournament, according to my rating, was Maradona. Because he made um, a total of four knockout goals, one that shouldn't have counted, and three others that were absolutely brilliant. So yeah, with four goals you can win it as well. I really got to do that. I hope I find the time soonish i definitely want to do a statistical review i'm already working on it um, of this world cup you know looking at each team uh, the overall performance uh, and also the 
uh, it add, add each game the performance if you've watched my match previous you already saw it for all quarter finalists so I want to extend this to all other games so this is definitely something I want to uh, get out relatively soon the goal scoring I want to get out by the end of this week and I also want to celebrate a little bit uh, the two finalists by making a little series but that will mostly be on my blog supplement where I buy some videos on the short history but yeah that's look ahead let's look back at the World Cup um, what what will I remember from this World Cup uh, of course France winning that's an obvious um, I will remember the, you know all semi finalists I think I will remember fondly uh, I will remember the penalty shootouts the three that we had which is actually a quite low number I think three penalty shootouts I don't think that little have happened for a while um, but with those three penalty shootouts uh, there was a lot of drama and the interesting part is that it's the team that won was never the one that goes first and from what I gathered this has been happening for quite a while at the World Cup now uh, which is odd because all the science of regular penalty shootouts uh, points that the one that shoots first is an advantage so yeah maybe there is something that needs to be studied more um, I definitely will remember Belgium against uh, Brazil and Argentina France I will remember a spirited performance by Uruguay against Portugal um, I have not worn my Uruguay shirts still I am planning to do that tomorrow for sure uh, not that it matters to you I think that one uh, Ur Uruguay was one that I actually was disappointed after the first two rounds of play and then the ne uh, then the next two games against Russia and against Portugal they really played super well uh, so that will they were definitely one of the better teams and finished fifth uh, in the overall ranking um, Sweden I will remember for being a uh, you know a less talented a less talented version of France but super dogged uh, and England then did very well of of disposing of them also gotta be said but Sweden they could have, they should have had Germany on the ropes already that they lost that game was uh, not was not very lucky for them because they could have been up by two goals at halftime so I, I will remember Sweden for sure uh, Japan of course I had the, the group H was just a joy to watch um, the African teams I will feel eternally sorry for because they probably had had the usual win total if not better than recent World Cups but it was distributed among all five teams and none progressed so that was uh, sad to see and that's probably the one and that Peru didn't uh, go for it I will remember the Peruvian fans best fans at the World Cup absolutely uh, and other and other Latin American teams great organization I think there were no hiccups except at the final the little um, storming the field action but and then the botched ceremony I think this was the only thing that really didn't go well at this world this world cup I will not miss the countdown before kickoff I think this was the most unnecessary thing ever among other things uh, I already said a few things about VAR uh, it was great that we have it but it could be improved I think they should review a little bit more in the box I'm okay that they didn't review the thing the, uh, for the penalty uh, for the free kick ahead of the first France goal these are judgment calls that should be kept for the referee and if it's that far away from the goal even if it is a sort of dangerous distance leave that alone I think they the usage of VAR was really well done it was not overdone uh, you never had long waiting periods maybe once or twice but uh, over, over I think VAR was used sparingly and well and that is an enhancement now where VAR I think failed was in calling penalties where a player was held wrestled down I mean I remember one by Kane against Tunisia I remember of course Mitrovic against Switzerland I mean those were two blatant calls and if penalties would have been given in the first few matches uh, for such offenses I 
think you can get rid of all the wrangling and haggling and whatever there is in the box prior to a free kick or corner kick. I will also remember um, the English uh, free kick and corner kick lineups. Uh, this was something else to watch. And I love it that England so openly even said this is not this is something we came up and we copied from American sports. We invented soccer, but now uh, we're doing we're looking around, we're looking outside of of our own world and try to get something out, out, out of that. And this is so refreshing to see from a British team, especially an English team. That's why I started loving England. That they they tried new things, they went outside. That's what uh, you gotta respect. And uh, I think the biggest compliment for England was that France did the very same in the World Cup final. They lined up like the English. The English did it better though. So this was for me uh, the biggest revelation that yes, England is still maybe a little bit a limited squad and they have to grow a lot, but I think they will get some talent after. But the Southgate said, yes, we are not the, the world's best nation anymore. We haven't been uh, for over 50 years. So why not try a different approach? Why not acknowledge that and try something else? For that, big thumbs up to England. And I hope that other nations that are riding high usually will do something similar. I think Brazilian soccer needs to take a deep good look at themselves Argentinian anyway because they are looking into the abyss uh, at recent youth world cups Argentina was a non-factor that should be very worrying for any Argentinian fan um, and I'm also thinking about the Netherlands and uh, Italy the two biggest nations to not qualify for this world cup um, we also saw that little small teams have good organization and that it doesn't need to be boring. The biggest thing, the biggest compliment I can give this World Cup over the other, that while there was similar organization as at the Euros, it was much better play. The Euros 2016 were a dreadful tournament to watch. And usually I think the Euros are the better tournament. The best tournament that I've ever, ever, ever watched was Euro 2000. And I think it was closely followed by Euro 2004 where it just didn't fit that Greece one. Um, they did what the Italians would almost have done uh, four years earlier, where they were the clearly most defensive team, but in a smart way. The Greeks were just brute force old school defense. And yeah, Euro 2004, other than the Greeks winning, was a very enjoyable tournament. There were great matches in there. Uh, it died down a little bit in the knockout phase. Euro 2000, uh, there's hardly any dull match that you can pick out. Sweden against Turkey, I think, was one that comes to mind. But there were so many great matches there. Uh, that was my favorite tournament of all time. I think uh, any World Cup pales in comparison to that tournament. So yeah, what else can I say? Uh, I will remember of this World Cup. First World Cup where no jersey had a short collar. Check it out. It was all either this v-neck, weird v-neck of uh, Nike with the straight line here. Uh, it was a round neck but there was absolutely none with a collar. To me that's sad. I grew up at a time when most shirts had collars. And to me it's still the gold standard to have some sort of a collar but yeah i mean times are changing uh people don't wear collars at least for sports shirts and you know i have a colleague who doesn't like that he doesn't he says that the french shirt is the worst because of this uh button here i know it's completely unreasonable to have it there it doesn't make much sense but for him the french shirt because of the button is the worst shirt in the tournament i just <laughs> I laugh at him because you know those are minor details. But yeah, too, I rail against other things like the Croatia jersey being white on the bottom and then have the red shoulders. So you know, everyone to everyone his own. In the end, we have to judge them, and their tastes are different.
Uh, so, as you might have been able to tell, my video got cut short by some reason. It's the second time it happened that during the drive, um, the video just stops, although there's still enough space on the phone for another for more. But anyway, I was towards the end of my video uh, topics that I can talk about. So I think it, phone told me, you know, it's better to stop now. And that's what I did. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, if you liked my review, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you have other things that you remember from this World Cup, please let me know. I'd be very happy to hear that. Um, also tell me what you would like to see from me coming after the World Cup. And yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated with my crazy world of soccer, which not only involves the games themselves, but also lots about shirts and statistics. I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.